Welcome to The Peak TV, where becoming your best self is our goal. I'm Ashley Russo, and this is Virtual in the Valley. Inspired by John Krasinski's Some Good News, we wanted to share all the amazing things and positivity happening right here in the Lehigh Valley. This week's episode is dedicated to arts and education. We hope you'll stay tuned. Enjoy. I'm seven years old and I am in second grade. I go to Calypso Elementary School in the Bethlehem Area School District. Thanks to my teacher, Mr. Santos, and all the other teachers for helping us learn at home. Hello, my name is Owen Johnson McCormick. I'm in ninth grade at 10 Freedom High School, and I just want to give a quick shout out to Miss G and all my other teachers and administration who are working their butts off to make everyone successful during this pandemic. My name is Mira Johnson McCormick. I go to um, East Hills. I'm in sixth grade, and I want to give out to, a shout out to um, Miss Stam and all my other teachers. Hi, my name is Kyle. I'm in ninth grade. I go to Freedom High School, and I want to give a shout out to all of my teachers who have helped me through this pandemic. My name is Lily. I am nine years old and in third grade at St. Michael's the Archangel School. Thank you, Mrs. Moyer, and all my teachers who have made this virtual learning possible. My name is Stephen. I am seven years old and in first grade at St. Michael the Archangel. Thank you, Mrs. Carey and all the teachers for making virtual learning possible. Hi, my name is Lila. And my name is Abby. And I'm Elle. And we're your students at Moravian Academy. I would like to thank my Spanish teacher, Senor Yaddington. I'd like to thank my fourth grade teacher, Senorita Medina and Senora Molina Chan. I would like to thank my my first grade teacher, Senora Pascuzzi. Thank you. Hola, mi nombre es Sam. Yo tengo ocho años y mi escuela es Moravian. Gracias, Senora Venegas, por todo el aprendiendo en la casa. Adiós. Hi, my name is Kimora and I am 11 years old. I am in fifth grade and I go to St. Thomas More School. I would like to give a big thank you to all my fifth grade teachers, but especially my homeroom teacher, Mrs. Finnegan. Mrs. Finnegan has been going through hard times with her father-in-law, but still puts in the effort to give us the work we need. Hi, my name is Addison. I go to Arts Academy Charter Middle School, and I want to give a shout out to all my teachers because they are so amazing, so I just wanted to say thank you. My name is Kana, and this is my brother. I'm in, I'm seven, and I'm in second grade. I just wanted to thank my t teacher, Mrs. Bukowski, for teaching me math at home. I miss you, and goodbye. I am being joined by Dr. Joseph Roy. He is the superintendent of the Bethlehem Area School District, and he is also the chair of Our United Way. So Joe, thank you so much for joining me. Thank you for having me. I'm happy to be here. What an unprecedented time this has been for the world, but also for education. Um, I think when the kids were told they weren't going to go back to school for a couple weeks, we didn't know where that was headed, and now we know where that's headed. Can you give us a, an overview of education right now? Though it was anticipated, uh, that we might be closed for the rest of the year, hearing for sure yesterday that we will be closed. I felt a sense of sadness across education, across the district. Teachers live for that connection with their kids. Kids need the connection, the relationship with the teachers, and all their friends are at school. One of the things that the school districts, certainly in Bethlehem, but across Pennsylvania and across the country, um, struggle with is uh, getting the free and reduced lunch to students and getting those meals out there. Can you tell me how you've responded to making sure those in most in need are being taken care of? Like um, pretty much every district around here, we're providing breakfast and lunch uh, to families, to students. And the way we're doing it is now twice a week, Mondays and Wednesdays from 10 to one at eight different locations around the district so that students can at least continue to have the meals that they would have received at school. 
so important. And what about that educational aspect? People are trying to figure out how to utilize technology, how to have access to their teachers. Some people don't have that technology. What is the school district doing to respond to the various ways um, that they need to reach their students? The crisis has really um, put a spotlight on inequities in society in a lot of different areas. And education is one of them with regard to technology and connectivity to the internet. So for Bethlehem, we're pretty lucky. Um, we had the uh, Chromebooks that we use in our schools. Six to 12th graders already had them, taking them home. Um, and we've distributed them to elementary families over the last week or so, the families that needed them. We had enough for every student. Um, and so getting the tool into the kids' hands, we're fortunate we were able to do that. RCN and Service Electric really stepped up in this crisis and are providing, for the most part, free internet access to eligible uh, families for the next several months. What are you hearing from teachers and parents alike about some of the challenges as well as some of the victories and how, how they're finding this to be successful as well? I am so incredibly proud of our teachers and how they have stepped up they're innovative, they are recording lessons. There are so many ways that schools and education are interconnected into the other needs in our community. And you mentioned about getting those free and reduced lunches to the, the families that need them. And your work with United Way is so meaningful. Can you tell us a little bit more about how you're connecting to places and other nonprofits in the community to help your students and your teachers at this time? Yeah, it's a critical uh, point that you make. The, and the United Way is kind of the foundation that is supporting all of the nonprofits that are filling even more of a need around mental health or food access um, or even housing. So for example, our uh, partners, all of whom are funded by the United Way in, in part for mental health, have set up online teletherapy. So they can do one-on-one so kids who need who are getting those services in school when our partners come in, they can now continue to get that online. I feel really proud about how we're doing, but I don't in any way want people to think that that means it's normal. It's not. Well, you are certainly trying as hard as you can and your staff and all the teachers out there. We have such an immense gratitude to all of you during this difficult time. And thank you for giving us some of the positivity of what's going on in education and how families can, can help their students and the help that's out there. So we just want people to know, uh, to encourage them to reach out to 211 if they have questions and know that that help exists. So thank you so much, Dr. Roy. Thank you, and we will get through it. We will get through it. Isn't it amazing how teachers have been able to rally around their students at this time? Let's take a look at some other organizations rallying around our community. The heart of our region is our community, and many local companies are coming together to offer support during this difficult time. Let's take a look at some of the amazing efforts that are happening right now. In partnership with Second Harvest Food Bank and Feed the Children, the Salvation Army continues to meet the increased demand for food during the COVID-19 pandemic. With combined efforts, they've been able to provide meat, canned goods, vegetables, drinks, and other food staples to over a thousand people in Allentown. This is their largest food donation so far in 2020. If you'd also like to contribute, just check out their virtual food pantry and give the gift of a meal to a family in need. Blue Mountain Resort has donated over 1,200 pairs of goggles, masks, gowns, gloves, and sanitizer to St. Luke's University Health Network to help battle shortages in supplies. Blue Mountain is also a drop-off location for Goggles for Docs, which is an effort to get new or gently used goggles into the hands of healthcare workers who may not have eye protection as they treat their COVID-19 patients. If you have goggles that you'd like to donate, all you have to do is put them in a Ziploc bag and bring them to the drop-off at the Summit Lodge. The Moravian College campus may be quiet, but don't be fooled because the Math and Computer Science Department is hard at work. Students have been working around the clock 24-7, producing materials in the 3D printing lab to create supplies for local organizations. They're making scarce medical equipment for donation in response to the pandemic. Students dropped off the first 40 stethoscopes to St. Luke's and the first 100 face shields to the Bethlehem Township Fire Department. The Lehigh Valley has faced challenges before, and we will continue to unite and will strive to rise together to be stronger than ever. For more inspiring stories of our tourism community, check out Discover Lehigh Valley's website. I'm Katie, and that was a peek at the valley. 
Looking for ways to stay active at home? Fitness expert John Graham is here to help. Today we're focusing on the lower body because lower body exercises help you to move around more easily as well as climb stairs. Today's exercise is the squat. The squat is a perfect exercise for working all the lower body muscles and it can be done in many different fashions. The first exercise we're going to show you today is the dumbbell squat. To do the dumbbell squat, select two dumbbells of equal weight, squat down to a parallel position before returning back to a standing vertical position. Another way to do a squat is by using resistance bands. When using resistance bands, make sure you secure the resistance band under your feet while holding the handles at shoulder level. As you do the exercise, make sure you go to the parallel position before returning back to a standing position. The last way to do this exercise is by using a household chair. When using a household chair, squat down to a parallel position touching the chair and return back to your standing position. Repeat this exercise for 12 to 15 repetitions for one to three sets. The beauty of doing the squat exercise is you can do it anywhere, whether you do it at home, your work, your gym, or while you're traveling on the road, and they don't take very much time. This tip was brought to you by St. Luke's University Health Network. Hi, everybody. I am being joined by Cassie Hilgert, the president and CEO of ArtsQuest over in Bethlehem. Cassie, thank you for joining us on The Peak. Hey, thank you guys for doing this. We're really excited to be a part of it. There are so many amazing things that ArtsQuest does for this community. How have you guys responded to uh, this pandemic and having people stay at home? There are so many things that we worried about when this first happened. Obviously, we're all concerned, first and foremost, for our emergency responders, healthcare workers. So I think once we got over that initial shock, it was, how are we going to keep connecting our communities? It's what we live to do, but we used to do it in person. Now, how do we do it? in this new environment. And that's when our programming team just sort of went off in the little virtual corner with our marketing team and they brainstormed and came up with this artsquest.org backslash at home. And since then, it has just taken off and it has been fulfilling for them. And I think for the people that are accessing it on a regular basis. What kinds of services are you offering to people in the, in the public um, as well as your members during this time? Sure, so if you go to artsquest.org backslash at home, you're gonna see a whole bunch of things there. Number one is, we are aggregating from a performing arts standpoint. So for concerts, we're finding some of the major artists out there, whether it's Alanis Morissette or Dave Matthews, and putting all those showtimes into one place by day. We've already launched the Lunchbox series, which is every day at noon, we've got a local performer that we uh, promote their live stream. So you can see Craig Thatcher, Dina Hall, they are doing you know just an hour long or a half hour show from wherever they can. So that's the performance performing arts, but we've also dipped into the uh, visual arts. Uh, there are um, all kinds of crafts and activities that you can access on that website. And then, you know, to get you up and moving, we're even offering salsa dances. Oh my gosh. All right. I might have to try that one. That's pretty good. Why do you think connection to the arts and music is so important always, but certainly during this time, something none of us have really ever been through before where we're at this stay at home and it's a whole new world. Why do you think we need this? I know we need school and I know we need yes. work, but why do we need arts and music? So, you know, we all need to find our way to express ourselves through this. We are going to go through a roller coaster of emotions and the beauty of the arts and connecting, whether it's to your own soul or to your neighbor virtually is that we are all artists we can all express ourselves. Uh, and that means we all have a place in the community to be heard and listened to uh, and contribute. I think it's also a beautiful time to maybe try something new and allow yourself to connect to the world around you in a different way, in a different space. So many people are talking about you know, picking up a new hobby. And I would imagine that all the things ArtsQuest is out there offering give people that opportunity and really for free. You know, it's, it's experiences that you really can't put words to sometimes. A lot of us grew up with Bob Ross uh, and the painting that it's we love trees. so much. <laughs> yes, we're just going to put a little tree right here. And we don't know why we loved it, but it did something to us. It connected us to him and to something larger. I am feeling the same thing. I watched one of our uh, programs online, and literally it was cutting a potato in half, carving it using a knife, dipping it in paint and making a print. And so, you know, in a half hour, I was suddenly making art and I did something that when I looked at it, I know I'll always remember this time and it connects me to that. So great stuff on there. 
I love that, Cassie. Well, thank you for all that you and the Arts Quest team are doing and keeping us all busy and active and engaged in different ways. What other message do you want to get out there to the people of the Lehigh Valley about arts, arts education and the time that we're going through? You know, I think uh, the time now is, is we all want to contribute and do what we can. Reach out to whomever you can uh, to help, whether it's donating. Uh, we're all looking at some really close uh, and emerging needs right now, whether it's food, uh, whether it's sewing masks, uh, you know, getting us through this most important time, but then remembering there's going to be waves to this. So when we come out of this, how do we support those organizations that convene us? Uh, and then I think coming out of that, we've got a chance to be an even stronger community if we can keep that altruistic feeling for as long as possible. Beautiful message. Cassie Hilgert, Arts Quest, thank you so much for joining us and for all that you do in our community. Ashley, thank you. Stay healthy. Arts Quest has always been such a big supporter of our community. It's so cool to see the arts and music alive in the Lehigh Valley. Speaking of, here's a craft that you can do with your kids right at home. Hi, I'm Lauren Rabin, and today we're going to be making credit card paintings. I'm here today with my son Aaron and my daughter Golda, and they've never done this project before, so we're all in it together. The materials that you need is a base, so you can use a piece of construction paper, you can use a canvas. My son is going to use a piece of foam core from an old school project. You're going to need a few colors of paint, some scissors, an old credit card or gift card, and some masking or painter's tape. So what we're going to do is we're going to start with our base. So you're going to take your paper, canvas, or foam core or cardboard or whatever you have around the house and you're going to create a design on it using the painter's tape. So you can write your name, you can make some shapes, my daughter's going to make some crisscrosses, some lines, and then we're going to move on to the fun part, painting with our credit card. So pick the size of, of tape you'd like to use and let's start our design. And everyone's is going to look different. That's what I love about art, is nobody's looks the same. Now we're gonna take our credit card or our old um, gift card that we everyone has them lying around. So you're gonna take your paint and make a little dab, just a little, onto your canvas, construction paper, foam core, cardboard, whatever you're using. That's great, that's fine. And then you're gonna take your credit card and you're gonna smear it and cover the tape, just like so. You're gonna start smearing all over your paper. And then when you run out of paint, you're gonna choose your other color. And again, doesn't have to be perfect. The fun part is when you take the tape off, you're gonna see all the negative space that the tape made and that the paint covered over. Very good. So now you've gotta wait until it dries and then we're gonna turn off the tape. So we'll be right back. We're gonna peel off our tape. So just using your fingers, your fingernails, you're gonna start peeling your tape. And when the tape is off, you can just put it on your paper towel. Okay, so we finished peeling off all of our tape and our paint is dry and we're finished. Did you guys like that? Yeah, it was a lot of fun. Yeah. It was fun, right? <laughs> we hope you enjoy it too. Stay safe, stay healthy, and wear a mask. Thanks, Lauren. What a great idea. Now let's take a look at an innovative program from the YMCA that's keeping families and kids fed at home. The YMCA is a, a critical partner in our community. We're trying to do the best we can through these challenging times. We know a lot of the food pantries are closing down and um, it's critical that our kids are still able to have a balanced meal. We're providing meals for our youth 18 years and under to be able to have uh, Monday through Sunday, seven days a week, dinner. Go to www.gv-ymca.org and it's Monday, Wednesday, and Friday at each of our branches as a drive through pickup from 4 to 5 p.m. That's true mission work at its best for the YMCA. Um, it's, it's really 
uh, heartwarming to know that we're providing meals for individuals who otherwise would not have some food in their belly and there's nothing worse than being hungry when you go to sleep at night. We're here for everybody and doing our best through this challenging time. Just one of the many things that the YMCA is doing during this difficult time for our community. Now let's take a look at two organizations joining forces to battle COVID-19. This is such a new normal for our nation, for, for our world, and this is a unique opportunity where you could literally help save another person's life after you've recovered. It's critical to be innovative at this time because we need novel approaches in a scenario where we don't have any proven therapies. Therefore, you have to use the best science available, the best information you have to try treatments that can help our patients recover in a positive fashion. First thought was, I hope I can fight this. I threw out the spare room to move into there, wiped down all the doorknobs, everything I touched. I had no symptoms after the 14th. St. Luke sent me an email for trying this plasma donation. If you want to try to do it, I called right away. Signed up within 15 minutes, I think they called. Convalescent plasma treatment has actually been around since as early as the late 1800s. And it is a process in which people that have recovered from an infectious process those people can donate plasma. In that plasma, there are antibodies that have developed. Those are infection-fighting proteins that can bind the virus or any infectious process they may be used against and help clear that infection. So the whole process is very similar to blood donation. So it's considered a community product. It gets donated to a blood bank. We use the Miller Blood Center as our blood bank. You need to meet our standard requirements and they're found on our website at giveapint.org. Once you've tested positive and are symptom free for 28 days, after you meet those general eligibility guidelines, then we will walk you through the next steps of the process. St. Luke's has been innovative in their approach to treating patients with COVID-19. Not just the plasma treatment that's now being utilized. We embarked on a very aggressive campaign of not only giving anti-inflammatories and aggressive supportive care, but also giving some antiviral medications. This has been a very difficult time for all of us, especially for healthcare workers, because we saw so many patients not doing so well. And so now that we've started to see some patients doing better, and uh, you know, see the families, the smiles on their face, uh, the, the real joy of the patient getting to leave the hospital. It's incredibly rewarding. Some people were making end-of-life plans, and when I started hearing that people were um, getting better from the plasma treatment, I, I, it was amazing. I, I was so glad. To be a donor, I mean, it's totally worth it. You could save a life. You could save more than one life. If you've recovered from COVID-19, you literally can be someone's hope. Your plasma can be their hope. Thanks to St. Luke's Miller Keystone and the first responders for all of your hard work and dedication to our community during this difficult time. And thanks to all of you for staying home and doing your part. If you'd like information on anything from today's show, go to our website at thepeaktv.com. Thanks for watching Virtual in the Valley. And remember, every day is an opportunity to be your best self. This is The Peak. I am thankful for my family, pets, nature, and God. I am grateful for all the creative and positive events that we see every day on social media. I'm grateful for my family. I am thankful for my job, my family, and for good health, and my kitties. We are thankful for our dog. <laughs> As a school nurse, I'm so thankful for all the employees of our local hospitals, you are putting your lives on the line to keep us all safe. I am thankful for my good health and my wonderful animals to keep me busy and entertained during quarantine. <laughs> we are grateful for the extra time that we get to spend together. Our health. And daily happy hour. What are you grateful for? I'm grateful for my family and my brothers. I'm grateful for all of the human beings who are sticking together to try to get this planet back to healthy. I am grateful for my two doggies who get up every morning and they're happy and inspire me to be happy too. 
We're grateful that we're at our home in Florida where the weather is good, Julie's cooking is wonderful, and she sort of knows how to cut my hair. Be safe. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel. To see more of The Peak TV, check out our website, subscribe to our YouTube channel, and catch us on WFMZ Channel 69.